The Ravens, Bengals, Patriots, and Jets are coming into week 11, hopefully rested and ready after a bye in week 10. Two of those teams go head to head with the Patriots hosting the Jets in Foxborough on Sunday with playoff possibilities on the line for both teams. Now, New England has won 13 straight games versus its divisional rival, including a win on the road just three weeks ago. And getting a look at the current odds in the AFC East, or the standings, I should say. Dolphins are atop of the standings at 7-3. and three. Now going into their bye week, then it's the Jets, followed by the Bills, both sitting at 6-3 and three there. And then finally, we have the Patriots at 5-4. and four. And getting a look at the AFC playoff picture, if the season ends today, we have the division leaders, Chiefs, Dolphins, Titans, Ravens, the AFC fifth seed, the Jets, the sixth seed, the Bills, the AFC seventh seed, the Patriots, and then in the hunt, we have the Chargers, Bengals, and Colts. Let's welcome in our front office experts, Rick Spielman and Scott Pioli, to talk about the Jets, Patriots, Ravens, and Bengals in week 11. So starting with the Patriots, gentlemen, currently the AFC 7th seed if the season ends today. They have a pretty difficult schedule coming up, Jets, Vikings, Bills. The Patriots would, of course, love to continue their momentum coming off the bye week and could make things a little bit interesting in the AFC East. Now, with that defense in New England, is this a team that we can realistically expect to contend in the AFC this year? And, and and what do they focus on in the bye week? Scott, we'll start with you. You know, Jacqueline, it's always so difficult for me to make predictions because it all has so much to do with the health. But at this time of the year, this is when endurance and health take over for football teams. You mentioned the Patriots defense, and they are playing really, really well right now. But if you look at the last five games that they've had, they're four and one. But those wins have come against teams like the Browns, the Lions, the Jets, and the Colts in Frank Reich's last game. Their one win has been against the Chicago Bears. So it hasn't been that tough of a schedule that they've come through. Now, as we get into the later season, again, the key is going to be how healthy they are and how healthy their opponents are. And again, when you look at the Pats, what they've needed to do during this bye week is to work on how clean their game is, work on fundamentals and details. Because when you look at Mac Jones, he has the, high, the NFL's highest interception rate. Their offense is tied for seventh most false starts and tied for eighth, eighth most offensive holding penalties in the NFL. And working with Bill Belichick, I know that those are the kind of numbers and the sloppy kind of football that make him want to throw up in his mouth. That is not Patriot football. And if they're going to have a chance to come on in November and December like they always do, they've got to clean those little details up. Yeah, and I'll, I'll make a prediction. I don't mind because I'm 100% wrong every time I say something. <laughs> it always goes the opposite way. So, <laughs> this is a huge game because uh, there's going to be a lot of playoff implications. If New England's able to beat the Jets, they've won two games against them. Um, but this is Mac uh, Jones has to play better, and their offense has to play better. They just don't look comfortable under Matt Patricia and what Judge is doing with them. I agree with Scotty, their defense is playing outstanding right now. They're always sound on special teams, but in order for them to have a chance, the offense is going to have to hold up their end of the bargain, which they're not doing right now. I mean, Rick, there's always a time Rick, to get it right. You, yeah, I, I'm sorry, and, and Rick's so right. When he talks about the offense also, it's going to be the running game, Rick, right? As we talk yep. about November and December, making sure that Ramondre Stevenson is the guy that he's been. Now, they're ranked 17th in the NFL in rushing yards, but the key is those are the kind of statistics that are sometimes misleading. Ramondre Stevenson is averaging 4.8 yards per carry, but it's the timing of their running game. Again, they don't necessarily have this dominant running game on paper, but it's the timing and the timing is always right when they need to run the ball and control the ball, particularly again, this time of year in the outdoors. And, and one thing, Scotty, on their offense, uh, Mac Jones is only averaging about 5.2 yards per throw down the field. So they're not taking chunk plays down the field. And if they can get that run game going and keep it going, that'll open up some opportunities for them to hit some chunk plays down the field. What I think the offense needs. All right, let's talk about the Jets. Zach Wilson, he's 0-3 in his career against the Patriots. So what do you guys think that Zach Wilson needed to work on in the bye week to finally beat this Bill Belichick defense? Rick, we'll start with you. Yeah, 0-3, it sounds like my predictions, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> at least you know where you're at. <laughs> 
the biggest thing Zach Wilson has to do is just manage the game. He was made some just god awful throws, three interceptions the last time they played New England. Uh, we just talked about New England. I think the Jets' defense, led by Quentin Williams, is just playing outstanding. But Mac Jones, if they can get the, or I'm sorry, uh, Zach Wilson, if they can keep the run game going, I know they lost uh, Brees Hall, I know they lost Vera Tucker, but if they can run the ball, that'll open up some things in the passing game. And he just doesn't have to make mistakes. Just go out, manage the game. He's actually five and one as a starter. Where they need to improve is on third down. Their offense is only converting 26, 27 percent, which is one of the worst in the league. And he him throwing, he's only completing 32 percent of his passes on third downs to convert first down. So they have to get better in that third down area. But just go out and manage the game. Don't lose the game for you because you got a very good football team. The rookies from last year's class are playing well. Don't screw it up. Just go out there and manage the game and make plays when you have an opportunity to. Rick, you nailed it on a couple of those points. But again, let's to be, be clear that even though Zach Wilson is 0-3 against the New England Patriots, this New York Jets franchise has lost their last 13 games against the Patriots. And we saw a stat just a couple of minutes ago where Wilson has had only two touchdowns but seven interceptions during this 0-3 span against the Patriots. He's completed only 53.6% of his passes. So regardless of how the Patriot defense plays, we know that they're going to play sound. We know that they're going to play solid. What they can't have happen is Zach Wilson cannot just blow it. And that's the thing, Rick, we also we often talk about making sure that you have a quarterback and players that don't lose the game. Zach Wilson has to go out and make sure that he does not lose the game for the Patriots because based on the numbers and based on the performance and some of the throws he made last time, we know that that's what he's done. Now, the other place that the Jets need to clean up is turnovers. They're 23rd in the league in terms of turnovers, and the Patriots' defense is third best in the NFL in terms of getting turnovers. So to me, this is going to come down to turnovers. Which team is going to turn the ball over, not just more often, but how timely? Because as we know, not all turnovers are the same. So that's going to be the key to this weekend, I believe. And the Jets would move into first place in the AFC East with a win, last place in the AFC East with a loss, and a Bills win. So moving along to the AFC North, we want to talk about the Ravens. They have the easiest schedule remaining out of the bye. Panthers, Jags, Broncos, that's their next three. So, guys, looking at the rest of their schedule um, in its entirety, are they a shoe in for the playoffs? Scott, what do you think? Jacqueline, I think they have a great shot at it. Again, I always have difficulty looking at future schedules and strength of schedule because to me, strength of schedule is something that can happen, that can change week to week and truly within game circumstances because the strength of a team has a lot to do with how injured they are or aren't. So to me, as we look at this snapshot, if everything is the way it is now, and with that dynamic quarterback that they have and the great coaching staff that they have, yes, I could absolutely see them getting their way into the playoffs. But again, in terms of a long range predictor, I understand what that schedule looks like. But again, that changes from week to week. Not, nothing is guaranteed in this league. And we saw it last Monday night when the commanders went in and beat the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, who were mm. You know, everybody's saying the best team, and that was done on national TV. So every week, you have to go in and prepare and make sure that you're playing your best game uh, on that week, or else you're going to get beat in the NFL. If they can continue to run the ball and play good defense, Roquan Smith come on, I think will definitely help their defense. Uh, they have a chance to run this this the, the table on there. But one note. Lamar Jackson is 22-3 and three versus teams that are under 500. And their rivals, the Bengals, they're currently the AFC 9 seed if the season ends today. Now, if the former AFC champs want to get back into the playoffs, it will have to be a job for Joe Burrow. That's presented by Jiffy Lube. Now, you guys, what did Joe Burrow work on in this bye week that can help him for the rest of the season or does it all depend on jamar chase and his health rick we'll start with you yeah i made a checklist on what joe burrow had to do during this bye week one the rest and recovery two make sure he picks up uh 
Jamar Chase and take him to treatment every day. And if he has to go to his house at night <laughs> with an ice bag for his hip, make sure he does that. Three, make sure he teaches the offensive lineman how to pass protect. And four, go sit into the offensive coordinator Callahan's uh, or, uh, off office and tell him how important uh, Joe Mixon is to this offense and run the ball. Yeah, Rick, I'm right there with you. The top things on his list need to be rest, recovery mentally and physically, and truly just getting himself ready for the next week. People don't understand how grueling these weeks are. They're halfway through the season. He has been beat up quite a bit this year. But I'll say this about the offensive line. The offensive line is actually starting to come together. Remember, they've got a whole new group of front starters up front, and they're finally looking like they're starting to gel. They look like they're trying to get the ball out a little bit quicker. So to me, as long as Joe Burrow got some rest physically, mentally, emotionally, he should be good to go for the second half. All right, and that is Rick Spielman and Scott Pioli previewing Week 11 in the NFL for the Jets, Patriots, Ravens, and Bengals. Thank you so much, guys. And for more insight and analysis, you can check out Inside of the NFL. New episodes drop every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, and you can also watch it. Everything is streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.